What's happening, everybody? Welcome to the next episode of the Guyao Now Show. Of course, I'm your host, Bob McIntosh. And today, it's just going to be me sharing some thoughts and inner workings of SEO or search engine optimization. Essentially, how can we start getting leads organically from Google in our business? Now, the reason that I wanted to talk about this is that there's been a lot, I've been getting a lot of questions about this, about the process, the, how does it work, is it worthwhile, all of that stuff. And all of these are great questions. So I wanted to take some time to actually address all of the questions and make sure that we answered as many as we possibly could uh, in this format. Now, the other thing that I want to address about this is some of the misconceptions that a lot of folks have when it comes to uh, SEO for real estate investors. There's a lot of times people think, oh, you know, I just got to do this or this, and I'm going to suddenly magically get leads for free from Google. And, you know, there, there's some truth to that. Obviously, you know, free being a relative sense, nothing is free when it comes to marketing. You had to spend either time or money. So we have to invest one or sometimes both to make this process happen. However, when it comes to the ultimate goal of SEO, which is to rank higher on Google. And by the way, SEO again stands for search engine optimization. It's the idea that we can work purposefully towards moving our site higher, closer to first place organically in Google and other search engines. That's what SEO means or stands for. It's, it's that process because we know we don't know the exact algorithm that Google uses. Um, and by the way, when I talk about SEO, I want to talk about Google. Why? Because even still today, they still control somewhere around 80% of all searches done worldwide, which means they're the number one player in the market still by far. Um, you know, if you if you combined um, all the rest together, they're still only making up 20 percent or less, depending on, you know, the number fluctuates a little bit. But Google's the, the monster. And the other thing is all these other search engines, they they mirror a lot of what Google does for search results. So if we get it right for Google, we're going to get it right for most of these other search engines as well. So understand that that's one of the misconceptions is like, well, do I need to do this for different ones? No, nope, we can do one set of SEO and it will more or less apply to everyone. Of course, there is some nuances, some differences here and there. But the reality is, if we get it right for Google, we'll get it right for most everybody else out there, or at least anyone else that matters from a, a quantity of searching standpoint. Okay. Um, so the next thing, um, or the, the thing in relation to this is understand that SEO, uh, you know, does magically get us leads, i.e. someone clicks, they, you know, they search, they click onto our site, they come to our site, hopefully they fill out our form and we get a lead that way. And then, you know, obviously if we work, then we'll close a deal. Now, if I look at our real estate business and we look at the past and we look at all the deals that we've bought, um, somewhere around 35 to 40% or so of those deals probably came from SEO. Um, and what I mean by what that means is that those efforts generated leads that we then eventually bought and like everything all marketing right not every lead that we're going to buy but the more leads we get the more deals that we have the option of buying ourselves or wholesaling or whatever it is that your business model is within the real estate investing world so understand um, that that is the case now the other thing um, that's really important to understand is that seo is a long-term play it's not going to get you leads today it's going to get you leads sometime tomorrow and when i say sometime because we don't actually know anyone who promises you results with seo like oh get ranked here in x number of months or weeks or whatever that's either either they're doing what's called black hat strategies which means they are tricking the algorithm into moving you up, which does get results. But understand that if you use black hat strategies and Google determines that you are doing that on purpose, you will be blacklisted from Google, which means you'll never, ever be able to show up in the search results ever again. There is no appealing it. There's no way to get your domain back. You're done. You're gone. Just done. Um, so I never recommend doing those things when it comes to building a long-term business. Like if you're just trying to sell something for the next two months and you don't care about the long-term, then sure, then that can work. But for most of us, we're real estate investors. We want to be here for the long-term. We want to be found on Google for the long-term. So don't play the black hat game, focus in on there and make sure that your provider is doing things above board. Um, if you're not sure, or you feel uncomfortable, or maybe you're, you think they might be, that's a reason to immediately terminate that relationship. Come talk to me. We'll help get you straightened out in the right direction. Okay. But um, it's a long-term play, right? We, we got to look at it from this side. The results will stack over time. So the results I put in today may not produce results today, but maybe in a 12 months from today, they do. But here's the great thing. As I stack those results, they continue to stack 
indefinitely. So long as I continue to do SEO on my site and continue the effort moving forward, those results will stack. So what I do today may not produce results for 12 months, but once it starts producing results, we'll continue to produce results indefinitely so long as I continue the SEO process on my website. And that's the benefit because as we go along, we get more and more and more and more and more deals from every piece of effort that we put forth. And since it's indefinite, so long as we continue, the great thing is, is that if we put forth just a little bit of effort consistently over a longer period of time, the cost per a lead or cost per deal goes down, or actually both cases it will go down because the effort I put forth today might produce results every month in 12 months for the next three, four, five, six, seven, 10, 20 years. Again, so long as you continue the process. And that's one of the most important things to understand is that um, it's not going to get you leads today. It's going to get you leads sometime tomorrow. Uh, in most cases, if you're a brand new site, don't expect to get results from SEO for at least six months, bare minimum, probably closer to 12 months. Um, as long as you are consistently doing the things I'm going to talk about here on this training and on this podcast. Um, but if you are if you're consistently doing those things, yeah, six to 12 months is usually what I tell folks to start seeing the results roll in over time. Now, a couple of things that I think are important to understand about SEO uh, as well. Number one, like I said, it's a long-term play, not a short-term. This is not paid advertising. We're not talking about being number one in terms of the ads. That's a whole different strategy. And at some point, we might talk about paid advertising. The last few years has been difficult due to um, for paid advertising to work effectively for investors because the main selling point investors have had has been, hey, we have cash and we can close on your timeline. Well, the last few years, everyone's got cash and everyone's willing to do whatever, right, just to get a house. Now that we're seeing over the next you know, 12, 18, 24 months uh, likely to be facing a recession, especially when it comes to real estate, given the interest rates that are happening, guess what's going to happen? Um, cash buyers like investors like you are going to become in demand again. And so paid advertising will start to pick back up. So we'll probably talk about that at some point in the future, but that's not this training. This training is about the SEO and getting ranked organically on Google. So when we look at the overall bigger picture of SEO. Uh, understand that nobody knows what Google's algorithm actually is except for Google. They don't share it publicly. They don't publish it out there. Uh, the best thing that we can do is follow the SEO developers, the folks who actually create, monitor, manage, and make changes to the algorithm. We can follow them and understand based on what they're saying. We can sort of infer some things. Now, every once in a while, they'll tell us, hey, this thing is important or this piece is important or that, right? Um, and obviously, we can also infer what's working based on the actions that we actually take. So from that, we know that the, the algorithm has somewhere around 200 or maybe even more factors that are that are counted in the algorithm, which means when your site, uh, when, when Google searches, right, or when someone searches on Google, rather, and they Google is deciding who to put in their search results, the algorithm is what determines that. And there are over 200 different things that it looks at to determine where somebody ranks in the order. Now, here's the thing. Don't try to become an expert by going to learn all these things and diving in. The reality is, unless you want a full-time job of just understanding SEO, it changes so often that it's going to be impossible for you, unless you like really love this stuff and really geek out about it, it's going to be impossible for you to stay up to date on all the latest changes. Because literally, you know, there's there's been days where Google has changed the algorithm as many as 30 times in a single day. OK, does it happen all the time? No, but the changes are continuous and constant, which means as a real estate investor, your time will be better spent focusing on revenue generating activities like closing deals, getting better sales skins, uh, skills, generating more leads, um, going on those appointments. All of that stuff is going to ultimately get you to a much higher close ratio and more deals than learning SEO. I promise you that. So the first thing is don't try to do this yourself. Hire someone like my team, Three Degrees Consulting to do it for you if you're going to actually do this, okay? 
So number two is when we look at the overall picture of the, all these factors, um, every niche that we work in is different. Now on this training, on this podcast and live video, we're going to be talking about this as a real estate investor specifically. And I want to be very clear. What I'm going to teach you here will work great for real estate because it's a separate, different niche than many other things. If you were to take the same thing that I'm going to teach you right now and apply it, for example, to an e-commerce store that has um, a highly competitive niche um, or is operating in a highly competitive niche, this is probably not going to work for that. Why? Because we have to look at the overall landscape that we see when it comes to SEO. It's not just about what we do on our side. It's also about what everybody else is doing on their sites. That impacts the algorithm too, which makes sense, right? Because Google's saying, I want to show the best results. Right. And so when we look at this, understand that what we're going to talk about now will definitely work for SC, uh, for real estate. It may work for other, uh, I'll say, lower competition niches. And when I say lower competition, what I mean is from an online standpoint, when it comes to real estate investing, most folks don't actually do anything in real estate um, online. Right. Especially from an SEO standpoint, most folks um their mindset is wrong. They're thinking, oh, this doesn't get me deals today. Why waste my money on it? And uh, Whereas I thought about it from the standpoint of, hey, if I make the investment today, it may not pay out today, but long term it will. And that's how we got deals sometimes as low as uh, $20, $30 per lead or, uh, um, you know, sometimes 50, 60 bucks per closed deal. Why? Because the long term benefits of SEO are there if we do it the right way. Okay. So let's talk about some of the major components from an SEO standpoint and understand that these are the major things. Remember, I said there's over 200 factors. So there's lots of things that go into play here. These are the major things that are going to have the biggest bang for your buck in terms of effort um, to, to get results. Now, again, as I go through these things, my goal is not to make you an expert at SEO. There's no way I could do that. And even, you know, without literally weeks, if not months of time of learning. So the goal is not to make you an expert. The goal is to get you to understand at a high level, how can I utilize SEO? What are the major things I need to be focused on? So that if you're paying somebody else for SEO right now, you make sure that you're getting the best bang for your buck. And if you're not paying somebody else for SEO and you're thinking about starting with the SEO process, um, you know what to ask for and obviously if you come to my team we're going to take care of you in these components because you know there's not very many people out there that know as much about digital marketing and real estate investing as me in fact i would challenge you to find someone who knows more about it than me there might be a couple of folks out there but not really um so let's talk about this number one backlinks backlinks is one of the most important things that we can focus on from an seo standpoint um right now and here's why uh, a backlink or let me actually start with this what is a backlink a backlink is a link on somebody else's website that points back to your website okay from a link from somebody else's website that points back to your website See, it used to be, you know, six, seven, eight years ago and more that all I could do is put some, some blog posts on my site and I'd start to rank. And that worked really, really well, actually, for a long time. Nowadays, though, backlinks have actually increased pretty dramatically in importance. And I'm not going to go into all the details, but there's, there's backlinks are not all equal. Um, every backlink is associated with what's called a DA, a domain authority or a DR domain rank, same thing, but basically a number that says how important is the domain that's linking back to your site. And the higher that number is, it's usually on a, on a one to 100 scale, the closer to a 100 it is, the more weight that backlink carries. So, you know, uh, and, and there's, it's not a one to one. It's not like, Hey, if I get one, you know, DR 10 link. Uh, versus 10 DR1 links, it's the same thing. Uh, it doesn't actually work in a one-to-one -one ratio. The higher it is, the more effective it actually is. So one DR10 link is, might be worth 15, 20, 30 sometimes DR1 links, okay? So understand that backlinks are important. And we need to have backlinks out there pointing back to our site. Now, there's only really two ways to get backlinks. Um, way number one, which is what Google wants you to do, is to reach out, uh, establish a relationship with a site owner, and have them post content or information where they link back to you and your site. This is the best way to do it because those links usually will be the highest D DR or DA, but it's also the most time consuming. It takes a lot of time to build a relationship with someone to get a single link, especially if we know that we need to have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 links a year or more 
Um, you know, sometimes, you know, we shoot for trying to get people at least 100 to 150 lengths a year. Um, that takes a lot of time to establish that many relationships, build the rapport and get a link. So while it's the, it's the most effective way, it's the way you're supposed to do it, it's also the most time consuming and the least efficient way. So the other way that we can do this is we can simply buy the links. Now, of course, Google doesn't really want us to buy links. Like that's not really, they would prefer that we don't do that because it, it defeats the purpose and it, it hurts the overall algorithm. Um, and so what they've done is they said, okay, we don't really want that to happen. So we'll scan for sites that have that are selling backlinks that we know and we'll essentially blacklist those sites so that those links are no longer relevant so just because you're paying for backlinks doesn't always mean that they're going to last forever especially if you buy them from low quality sites and this is why it's really important if you're paying for backlinks to get them from at least a dr or da 10 plus the reason being that um if they've got a 10 plus on their domain rank or domain authority it's a good chance that their site's not going to get taken down because um, Google's already said, hey, look, you're you're good enough to get up to, to that to that level. Right. So we got to have backlinks. Now, uh, more is always better within reason. If you have a site that's brand new, for example, and then all of a sudden you start adding 2000 backlinks a month. Right. That's going to send off red flags to Google as well. They're going to go, wait a second. Uh, that doesn't seem legitimate. Like that's probably you're probably paying for those, which is is not what we want. And so they're going to take note of that, too. So usually slow and steady wins the race here. It's not about adding a thousand backlinks in one month and then not doing anything there moving forward because Google can see that as well. It's about saying, hey, I'd rather have a thousand backlinks spread out over the next 12 months. So, you know, we're talking like a hundred a month um, versus having a thousand in one month. Slow and steady over time will win the SEO race. And it also ensures that you're not, so it doesn't get blacklisted because you're buying links, which you're not supposed to do. Um, but the reality is most everyone does anyways. Okay. So that's backlinks. And there's a whole lot more to it than that. I'm not going to go into all the nitty gritty details, but that's the basics of backlinks. Number two is the actual content on your site. And usually this is referred to as blogging. It is important to show to Google that you are continuously adding new content, new relevant content to your niche vis-a-vis um, -vis blogs. Now you can call whatever you want to, but blogs is the most common word, uh, common word used. And they're all, all we're talking about is, are you actually adding new content to your site on a regular basis? Um, because that content indicates to Google that you're up to date, that you're modern, that you're talking about relevant stuff that's happening right now that's still important. Now, even though in the real estate investing, investing business, the reality is nothing has really changed for the last you know, hundred years. If you think about it, like the process for us to close a house is more or less the same. Um, you know, maybe we introduced online aspects so you can docu sign instead of physically signing. But at the end of the day, guess what? The actual process is pretty much the same. So when it comes to this, even though that's the case, Google doesn't care. They still want you to be talking about what's happening in the modern market in real estate. What's actually going on today? How are things working out there right now? And this is an important thing. Um, even if you're saying the same thing that's been said for the last hundred years, even if you're saying the same thing that everyone else is saying, uh, as long as you're putting it in your own words and you're creating what we call unique content, that's something that you get credit for in the algorithm. And it is important to continuing on. Now, like much like backlinks, there is more uh, content is better, but there is a limit. If you suddenly start posting 100 blog posts a, a month and you haven't posted any before, Google is going to go, wait a second, this seems kind of fishy, right? So for most real estate investors, the reality is if you're publishing four a month or once a week, that's that's totally fine. And it's also very manageable and reasonable if you think about it, right? It's 52 articles a year. That's a very reasonable process, a, a number to create over the course of 12 months. We can create all of those without too many, uh, too much hurdle or issue if we wanted to do it ourselves. Again, would I recommend that? No, because there's a lot more to content creation, such as inserting keywords and things of that nature, which we're not going to dive uh, too much into. But understand that um, all there's a lot more factors that, but you have to be publishing content. Um, and you have to be publishing the right kind of content. What I mean by that is content that's relevant to the things that people are actually searching in your local market. 
So for example, if I'm operating in Buffalo, New York, and I start writing articles that don't relate or aren't relevant to the process in Buffalo, New York, for example, if I start saying, oh, you're going to close with your title company, nope, uh, Google's going to recognize that. That's no good for me. Why? Because in Buffalo and all of New York State, for, uh, for that fact, we don't close with title companies. We close with attorneys on both sides. Okay. And so now all of a sudden we've got title companies that we're talking about and it's not relevant. Google's going to know because they can read all the other content out there um, and understand it to a certain degree and then relate back what you're saying to yours and see how relevant it actually is. Further, they'll take relevancy from the users that go to your site. Let's say I go to a site and someone reads the article and it's not relevant at all. Well, guess what? They're going to leave and go someplace else, which means their time on site was very small, which is an indicator to Google that your content's no good. So having content is great, but it has to be the right content focused on the right keywords that folks are actually searching for and relevant. The other thing that it has to do is it has to be the right length. Now, there's a lot of debate about length. From Google's perspective, they want long form content, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 words. The longer the form, the better Google likes it. But we have to balance what Google wants with what users will actually relate to, read, and take action on. I read a 3,000 word article about selling your house fast. Guess what? Most people are probably not going to read that, or at least most motivated sellers. They don't care about reading your 3,000 word essay about how to sell your house fast. They just want to know, can you help me sell my house fast? Yes or no. So we always have to balance that. Uh, and we do that one of a couple of ways. Um, the, most, uh, the most common way is that we write the occasional long form content. So maybe one piece is a thousand, 2000 words. And then we write a bunch of shorter form. It's like 500 words. Um, so this way, most of the stuff that we put out there is going to be short form. So the sellers can kind of read it, get to it, get to the point. Um, and then every once in a while, we throw Google a bone by saying, here's some long form content. That's one way. Um, there are other ways that we can do this by creating series, say part one, two, three, four, and then linking into each other and a few other things. I'm not going to go into the details of that. Again, this is getting into the nitty gritty that you shouldn't be focused on. The most important thing to know about SEO when it comes to content is that you need to be continuously, consistently publishing content. For most investors, the ideal quantity is about once per week and also take note if you can consistently post your content on the same day and same time google will know that as well um, because if you have the right kind of site design we'll actually be telling google that we publish content which by the way if your current website provider is not doing that for you that's a huge missed opportunity um, but we'll actually tell google hey we just published new content here it is if we do it on the same date or same day of the week and same time every single week we actually get more credit when it comes to um, Google's uh, algorithm and showing up further in the search results. Now, that's one of those minor factors, like just doing that is not going to be enough to, to break through to the top of the niche, but it is something that they look at overall. And it is something that um, is going to help a little bit, uh, especially if you're going after a more competitive keyword. Okay. All right. The next thing is going to be your on-site factors. So there are a bunch of things that you have to do the right way on your site to make sure that your site is operating as efficiently as possible. What does that mean? What are those things? Some of them are like page speed optimization. So does your site actually load up very quickly? For every site that we build, all the real estate sites that we built for our real estate investors, you know, we have very fast load times. In most cases, your page is loading up in three seconds or less. Why? Because that's a factor that Google looks for, and it's an important thing on the page. Do you have the right H1 tags? And if you don't know what that is, perfect. You don't need to know. Just understand that you're going to hire someone who does know what that is and that they're doing it the right way. Do you have the right images with alt tags? Do you have the right keyword distribution and density? All of these things, these are what we call on-page factors or on-site factors. All of these things are when, uh, when Google's little robots come and crawl your site and look through all your stuff, these are the things that they're looking for. And the, they are the things that they will take back to Google and say, hey, here's what we found. And then Google's algorithm will look at what they found and use that um, scoring mechanism to determine where you actually fall when it comes to an SEO and uh, ranking standpoint. Now, again, there's lots of different on-site factors. I'm not going to go through them all because you know probably half of the things in those 200 factors that Google looks for are things that you should be doing on your site. Like everything, some of those things have a higher weight than others. So generally, we focus on looking at the higher weight items and not worrying about the smaller items. And this is why I love SEO for real estate, actually, because most people aren't doing anything uh, at all when it comes to SEO. They simply put a site up and then they're done, which is fine, right? Like, don't get me wrong, like, hey, it works. But that creates a massive opportunity for those who are focused on it because there's not as many people 
publishing content, getting backlinks, doing the on-site stuff. And because there's not, there's a better opportunity for every investor right now, at least, um, to continue this. Obviously, as more investors get in the mix, especially in your local markets, it becomes harder. And that's where those smaller factors start to come in way more. But the reality is most investors are not consistent at SEO. And uh, if they are doing it, and the majority of investors aren't doing it at all. So it's kind of an open field. It's, it's a way for you to say, hey, how do I get more leads in my business? Well, this is a perfect way because we always are taught focus on the marketing that nobody else is doing. All right. This is marketing that nobody else is doing. So why would we not want to focus on it? Again, it takes time. That's the, and that's probably why most people don't is because they're not patient. They want leads today. Um, but understand that the long-term viability of your business is all about getting your cost per lead and your cost per deal down. The lower it costs, the lower your cost per deal, uh, cost per acquisition, sometimes it's called, is the more uh, wiggle room you have, right? Let's just say if someone else is paying $1,000 or $1,500 to get a deal, but you're only paying 50 bucks to get a deal, well, you can offer that seller $1,000 more because your cost to acquire that deal was that much lower. So the long-term benefit is massive. Um, it just takes time to get there, okay? Um, so that's the major, the major components, right? So we have backlinks, we have great content and we have on-site factors. Now, again, there's a lot of other things to SEO than what I just talked about, but this is the most important con uh, aspects as a real estate investor. If you focus on just doing those three things well, uh, you will see results pretty quickly. Um, now, obviously again, there's a lot more to it. And when we do SEO for folks, we dive into a whole lot more detail um, because this is what we do. But understand that if you just did those three things, you're going to see pretty good results over time when it comes to SEO. Now, when we look at this process overall, the thing that I want to hammer home is again, about 35 to 40% of all the deals we ever bought came from this process. Again, it is a long-term process. It will take time, but it will produce long-term results if you, uh, if you focus on it. Now, the thing that I often see happen is this. And I, um, actually, I want to go back real quick to content. A lot of people say, oh, I'll just copy paste other people's content and put it on my site. Nope, it's not unique enough then. You have to create your own content, your own unique content. You can't steal other people's content. In fact, if you steal too many people's other uh, content and Google says this content is too similar to other folks out there, it actually brings your ranking down. It hurts your algorithmic score and actually moves you down the rankings, not up them. So we don't want to steal other people's content that's no good. Now, obviously it's good from a, a user standpoint, right? Just to have some content, but it's not going to help you from an SEO standpoint. In fact, it might even hurt you. So it's always better just to get your own content, have someone write it for you, hire someone to do it for you, create it yourself, um, whatever the process is, doesn't matter, but just, you know, focus on having unique content on your site. It will help you. Now, one of the things um, that I did want to talk about in this training is, hey, this is something my company can help you with. If you're, uh, and I won't go into all the details because SEO, uh, understand SEO is very much a budget driven thing. You tell me I have X number of dollars a month, I'll tell you what we can do for that. Because so much of this stuff, whether it be getting content written, whether it be um, getting backlinks uh, purchased, all of that. That stuff is important when it comes, or it's, it's a, a cost derivative. So what I mean by that is it costs money to do those things. So you tell me how much money that you have available, and I'm going to tell you how much we can actually do and what you could expect your potential results to look like. Um, but this is something that we can do for you. We have content creators on our team. We have backlink providers. Um, we will fix all of your on-site factors. If you don't have a great site already, reach out to us. If you have one of our sites that we built for you, we've already developed it to take advantage of SEO for you. Um, and all of that is why, because I understand that the long-term viability of SEO is huge. And if we do the right things the right way, we can help each and every one of you get more deals, build a better, better business, achieve whatever it is that you're after by doing this. Because remember, Closing more deals is not what the goal is. The goal is to create some sort of freedom, whether it be time freedom, money freedom, or something else. That's the end goal, right? And so this is simply a vehicle to get us to that end goal quicker. So if you have questions or you want to know more about how my team can help you with SEO and just make the process work better for you, then simply reach out to me, drop a comment on this, just say, hey, Bob, can you help me? And we'll set up a one-to-one -one call. Uh, and the reason it has to be a one-to-one -one call is because I need to understand more about where you're at, what you're doing, who has your site, how is it built, was it built the right way, do we need to build you a site? 
Um, what else do we need to do? There's a lot of different factors that we need to look at when it comes to this. So it's just the, uh, it's really just a matter of saying, Hey, where are you at right now? What's your budget? And, and I can tell you, Hey, this is how we can help you. So I would love to help anyone who wants that more, just drop a comment. Or if you're listening on the podcast, reach out, um, you know, to, to me, uh, via social media or email, if you have it and we'll go from there. Otherwise guys, that's it for this training. Uh, I try to keep these short, tight and to the point. As always, thank you for listening, watching. Uh, if you're here on the Facebook Live, please drop a comment. Uh, if you're listening on the podcast, we do these live before we put them on the podcast. So the best thing that you can do um, if you're listening to this on the podcast is drop into the group. It's 100% free. Um, just drop into our uh, our group. Just go to go3dc.com, G-O, the number three, D-C is in Delta Charlie or Degrees Consulting, three degrees consulting. So go3dc.com slash group go 3dc.com slash group. And by dropping, uh, that'll actually take you right to the Facebook group. You can request access again, totally free to be a part of that. Love to have you there. Uh, if you're already in the group, drop a comment, let me know. Um, and if you're not listening or subscribed to the podcast, please do so. This content is great for everybody. It's free, but the point, the simple thing is that if we don't share it, if you don't put it out there, more folks can't hear it. If they don't hear it, they can't participate. It doesn't help them. Uh, and the whole goal of this is to help everyone because, you know, as the saying always goes, a rising tide floats all ships. And that's the goal of this show is to do that for every single person out there who's a real estate investor. So without any further ado, thanks so much for chiming in or tuning in, listening. As always, your time is the most valuable thing that you can give to me. And I truly do appreciate it. We'll see you guys on another great show next week. Take it easy.